The second season begins with Din Djarin looking for another Mandalorian, who was said to be on Tatooine. Din headed to the designated location on Tatooine, only to discover an imposter wearing Boba Fett's armor. The imposter's name was Cobb Van, the Marshal of Mos Belko, who traded the armor off the Jawas, who stole it off Boba Fett. Cobb Van made a deal with Din, asking him to help him kill a great dragon that threatened the settlement in exchange for Boba Fett's armor. Din got help from a group of Tusken Raiders, uniting both the villagers and Tuscans for the hunt, and successfully killed the great dragon by having it swallow a living bantha tied with bombs and blowing it up from the inside. As promised, Cobb Van gave Din Boba Fett's armor. Having obtained the armor, Din learned from the technician Pilai Molo that the frog lady could help him find a group of Mandalorians in exchange for a ride to the water planet of Trask. On Trask, Din ran into the Mandalorian Bo-Katan, who promised him the location of a Jedi to her acquaintance in exchange for helping her capture an Imperial ship. When the mission was done, Bo-Katan pointed Din to Ahsoka Tano's location, where Ahsoka was fighting to free a city from a female warlord named Morgan Elspeth. Din encountered Morgan Elspeth first, the latter offering him a Beskar spear in exchange for helping her hunt down Ahsoka, which was how the Mandalorian found Ahsoka. Once Din convinced Ahsoka that he was a friendly and informed her of the child, Ahsoka engaged in a non-verbal conversation with the child through the Force, during which she discovered that the child's real name was Rogu. Din learned from Ahsoka that Rogu was born and trained in the Jedi Temple during the Galactic Republic era, and lost his memory after the Jedi Temple fell under Order 66. Din helped Ahsoka free the city from Morgan Elspeth in exchange for Ahsoka training Rogu, but Ahsoka still refused to train Rogu in the end. In substitution, Ahsoka advised Din to head to the planet Tython, where Din could place Grogu on top of a scene stone in order to summon a possible Jedi willing to take the child in for training. When Din arrived at Tython, placing Grogu on the scene stone, nothing happened. He left Grogu alone on the scene stone to confront two newcomers, who turned out to be Boba Fett and Fennec Shan, whom Boba rescued after her presumed death at the hands of Tora Calican. The young bounty hunter then killed for kidnapping Grogu. Boba demanded the return of his armor, while Din refused, not knowing about Boba's Mandalorian heritage. Their meeting was soon interrupted by Moff Gideon's Imperial Remnant, who tracked the Razor Crest to the planet through a tracker placed on the ship during the repair back on Navarro. Boba and Fennec helped Din repel the stormtroopers, while Din attempted to retrieve Grogu, only to find Grogu trapped in the energy field of an activated scene stone. The Seeing Stone was deactivated soon after Din joined the battle to hold off the Stormtroopers, and Moff Gideon successfully kidnapped Grogu by sending a squad of Dark Troopers. He also ordered the Razor Crest blown up, causing Din to lose all his possessions except for his armor and the Beskar Spear gifted by Ahsoka. Having retrieved his armor, Boba convinced Din of his Mandalorian heritage by showing him Jango Fett's genetic code and offered to help Din rescue Grogu. In order to find the location of Gideon's ship, where Grogu was held prisoner, Din went to Kara Doom for help. Now a marshal for the New Republic, Kara used her position of power to bail the mercenary Mix Mayfield out of prison, so the latter could help Din break into an Imperial facility to download the location of Gideon's ship. Din was forced to take off his helmet for a facial scan and to avoid blowing his cover, breaking the Mandalorian Creed for the first time. Mayfield encountered and killed an old Imperial officer he served under, and the two successfully escaped from the Imperial facility with the coordinates to Gideon's ship. Kara allowed Mayfield to escape by faking a death report, and Din recruited Bo-Katan and her fellow Mandalorian comrade Koska Reeves for the rescue mission. The crew captured Dr. Pershing to gain a tactical advantage over Moff Gideon, learning more about the nearly indestructible Dark Troopers on Gideon's ship. Din and the others infiltrated Gideon's ship through a stolen Imperial aircraft. Kara, Bo-Katan, Koska, and Fennec fighting their way to the main deck for distraction, while Din headed off alone to rescue Grogu, banishing the Dark Troopers on board out of the airlock during the process. Din and Moff Gideon engaged in the duel, Gideon's Dark Saber against Din's Beskar Spear. Din overpowered Gideon, holding him captive as well as becoming the rightful owner of the Dark Saber. Din and the others were soon trapped on the deck as the Dark Troopers flew back into the ship, ready to kill the crew to rescue Gideon. At the last moment, a mysterious Jedi arrived and cut down all the Dark Troopers on board the ship with his green lightsaber. The Jedi revealed himself to be Luke Skywalker, 
and he was made aware of Grogu's presence through the seeing stone. Luke offered to take Grogu in for training, and Din bid Grogu farewell, taking off his helmet once again so that Grogu could see his face for the first time before they said goodbye. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, be sure to like and subscribe for more about Star Wars lore. I'll see you in the next video.